Hi everyone and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be looking at one of my other hobbies uh, which is classic computers, specifically in this instance the Amiga. Now recently Hyperion Entertainment announced that they've released Amiga OS 3.2 and I've got a CD-ROM on order for that. One of the things for it is that the Amiga has the kickstart ROMs and while as I understand it not completely compulsory for 3.2 it does help with the boot sequence and makes things bits and pieces a little bit quicker so I need to program my own EEPROMs for that now for that purpose I do have a TL8662 plus um, to be able to program EEPROMs and flash and all the other bits and pieces now the trouble is is that the type of EEPROM that the Amiga uses is not directly compatible with this so what we're going to do for that is create or build an adapter. Now, I bought one from a company called Digical Things, who's, which is run by Greg, I believe, if I remember correctly. Sorry, Greg, if I've got... <laughs> I'm terrible with names. Um, and he creates a kit that enables you to convert this so it's able to actually program the same chips that the uh, Kickstart uses for the Amiga. And this is a kit, so what you get with it is circuit board, uh, another ZIF socket, some pins, and a couple of switches. So we've got a double pole, double throw, uh, and a rotary encoder switch. I love these, these are brilliant. Um, so you've got effectively 10 uh, different outputs which come through encoded on the pins on the bottom. Uh, on the circuit board itself, there are some surface mount components which are already pre-soldered. To be honest, part of me, I kind of wish that they'd not been done so I could have had a go at doing service mount soldering, but I do appreciate the fact that I'm a bit of a masochist, so um, a lot of people wouldn't be that interested in trying to solder such fiddly little items. So great that they're already on there. So first thing I'm gonna do is get this all soldered up. Once we've got that, I'm going to try and read off the data that's on this. Uh, there's already a kickstart on this, so I'm gonna read that off. In the kit you get a short letter just to give you a quick overview of what you need to do with it all. Now it does say in there, I, I've watched other videos about this and it mentions about the fact that the ZIF socket has to sit over the top of the legs that will go into the ZIF socket of the reader. So it's got on there just to make sure that you read through or watch the videos on that. So I'm just gonna have a quick look at those to make sure that I'm not going to stuff anything up and then we will get this built. So here we've got the final build, not that difficult to actually put together. The biggest problem is this strip here because obviously it sits underneath. So you've got to make sure that as per the video that you trim the top of the, or this side rather, of the strips of pins down so that they're reasonably close to the PCB so this ZIF socket can sit over the top. Um, so basically what you've got on here is obviously the ZIF socket for your EEPROM to go into. I'm going to have to find out exactly which position it needs to sit in, but we'll say there for the moment just for illustrative purposes. Um, obviously pop it in, clamp it down, and then you've got a switch here which enables you to select between uh, the different types of EEPROM that this is actually capable of adapting. And then on the side here you've got the bank select, so you can select which bank it is, which actually, as I, as I understand it, is the reason why this can't by default read it because you've got effectively with some of these too many banks to be able to this doesn't have enough address lines or something along those lines hopefully if anyone knows in the comments they can put the reasons why um, but suffice to say it's not compatible with this style of EEPROM which is a 27C400 which is the one for the in my instance the Amiga 1200 so 
Next up is to get this connected up onto the computer, find out exactly where I need to put that in here, and then we'll have a look at reading off the data that's on this EEPROM. So now that we've got the circuit built, we, let's give it a test and make sure everything's going to be working okay. So the first thing we want to do is get it popped into the reader. So we need to make sure this lines up right. Go and then put the arm down of the ZIF socket in the reader itself. Uh, and then we've got to put our ROM in, which uh, needs to line up at the bottom here. So we'll just pop that in. It wasn't too clear actually on the instructions as to where the pin sort of needed to go on this. So I made the assumption, I've tested this already, um, but I made the assumption that it needs to be at the back of it. So, uh, and that seems to work, so that's okay. Um, now this particular ROM isn't that big. I can't remember the size of it off the top of my head. So it's only gonna be bank zero. I think we need to worry about this. And the switch is set for the uh, 27C400, well, 400, 800, uh, 160. Um, so this is actually the kickstart out of my Amiga at the moment, my A1200. Um, it's the 3.14 version. So what we'll do now, I've got the program ready to go. So we need to make sure that the check ID is switched off on this, otherwise it will throw an error. Um, so now we can just click read, read, and this will bring us the contents of the ROM here. Now, part of the reason I pulled this particular ROM out of my system is because I also have a copy of the uh, original burning file. So the one that actually gets supplied by Hyperion, which means I can do a comparison to make sure everything's being read properly from it. So with this one, we can then do save, and then save it as the high ROM because that's what it is. Next up, we'll go to this application I've got here, Flex Hex. <laughs> In all honesty, it's the one that I found when I just done a quick Google for it. So I'm gonna open up the one we've just done. So this is the one we've just read. Now the nice thing we can do here, if I can remember where it is, there it is. So we can click compare. I can then open up the high file for the file that I got from buying the Kickstart ROM from Hyperion. So we can click on that, and then what we can do is just click OK, and this will compare the file that we've got against the ROM that we've just read off of. So if I click OK there, and it's got the streams are identical. In other words, that they are exactly the same. So really all I wanted to do there was just make sure that this thing is actually reading correctly, and I've got it all set up right, and everything's all ready to go. So that's this video pretty much done. There's not a lot more I can show you with this. Uh, hopefully Amiga OS, the 3.2 version, will eventually get to the Amiga dealers and then out to those of us that are interested. Uh, once I get that done, then I can obviously burn the ROMs to these EEPROMs. Now there is a caveat to that. These are EEPROMs. I can't just click a button and have them erase. One of the things I do need to do, and as you can see on this one, there is a window on the top, so you need to expose these to UV in order to actually erase them. So I need to get an eraser for these. Um, pretty cheap, I think on eBay, I've seen them going reasonably priced. So um, it's UVC, as I've, my investigations, because I looked at sort of, could I build one myself? And apparently it seems to be UVC that you need to use in order to erase these things, which is a nasty one to have to deal with. Uh, there's another channel much bigger than me that I watch, uh, BigClive.com. He's done a lot of videos on quack UVC for sterilizing, um, but he has done some on real UVC and it is quite bad for you if it gets ex too much exposure and even a small amount. Uh, he's sort of done it where he's waved it over his hand and he's just had said that there's a smell of pork, which is just grim really so yeah it's not an easy one to have to deal with so i'll probably just get a proper thing for that one but that's it for this video uh, as always thank you very much for watching and i will see you in the next one